Going right in line with the most recent Volkswagen video that we released, we want to talk a little bit about VAGCOM or VAGCOM and what that is. So if you own a Volkswagen, Audi, or if you're in a different country and you have a Skoda or whatever other brands fall under that umbrella, I know there's a... VW brand. Yeah, VW Auto Group. There's a huge you know, slew of brands that they're owning now. Um, you have the ability on your own to basically customize the car farther than from what the factory intended. Now, the main way to do this is the most common way. There's a tool called uh, VAGCOM or VAGCOM, which is basically a um, cable that you plug into the OBD port on your car, and you can run it to a laptop, and in that you can make changes. This was the OG original way to do it, um, but you know, moving forward into modern technology here, there's simpler, more uh, affordable ways to do so. Uh, I personally use a tool called OBD11, and that's Bluetooth. It basically plugs in your OBD port on your car, and then you have an app on your phone to which you can use to customize the car. So you may be asking, we keep saying customize car, make it your own. Uh, what exactly do we mean by that? Uh, any kind of electronic aspect of the vehicle. So just for example, um, I've got a Volkswagen product right now and some of the mods that I've done on my car with this uh, OBD11 tool um, is that I can, uh, some of the mods that I've done on my personal car is that I can roll the windows up and down with the key fob now. So if it's hot out on a summer day, I can walk up to the car, roll down the windows or roll them back up if I'm too lazy to do so when I'm in the car. Uh, I have the gauges do a little sweep before I start the car. You know, that's real, pretty cool. Real sports car style, right? It's basically a golf R now. <laughs> so you've got that. Um, you can change all the different DRL settings. So you can change, you know, whether you want your daytime running lights on, whether you want them off, what you want them to do with your blinkers on. Do you want them to stay on? Do you want them to stay off? You can adjust the brightness. I want to get in there. That's that's so annoying when when you have the LED uh, daylight running. Like they turn off and your looks blinkers. like they're broken. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, that, that's really annoying. I wish I could change it on my focus. I know I could do the uh, global windows, which like push the button goes down, and I wish I could change that too. Like, I wish I could. They do it as a safety feature. It makes the blinker more noticeable. But yeah, from like an aesthetic standpoint, yeah. it looks like your car is broken and it looks like your fancy LED annoying. strip isn't working anymore. Uh, you could do that. Uh, you can do a whole different kind of adaptations with uh, having the car remember your heated seat function. So if you have the heated seats on, you know, level two, you can get out of the car, turn it That's off, come back. Cool. You can have it remember <laughs> where your heated seat is. You can have a like remote uh, starter and then your settings will remember that. The heated you, seat. Because like the focus you get in every time you turn it off and on, it will like erase it everything. It starts fresh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so man. with this, you can go about, you know, and have it do it that way there. Um, there's a lot of other fe uh, features as well. Uh, they have like a courtesy wipe with the wiper. So if your windshield wipers go, you know, you spray them to clean them. They go and they clean and they go down. A couple seconds later, it'll do a courtesy wipe afterwards because as you know, when you spray your window, you're going to get drips going down there. So it'll take care of that as well. Um, you can change convenience blinks. So if you tap the blinker without engaging it, you know, most cars, at least modern cars, will do like anywhere from two to three blinks. You can set that to be longer, or like oh, five wow. blinks. So that's that way cool. it's actually functional because I don't know about you, but I don't change lanes like that. <laughs> it takes me a couple seconds to get over there and do my thing. Um, but those are just some of, you know, a few of the options area. If you switch your car, you have like a more base model and you want to upgrade to like LED taillights or HID headlights or something like that, you can actually code the car to accept those pieces without even messing with wiring. That's pretty cool. So as long as your car shares a wiring harness with the upper trim levels, uh, you can take your halogen headlights, you know, with no fancy LEDs, swap in the nicer ones, and then you basically just check a box in the software saying that, you have the upper trim level headlights and the car accepts it. So if you put a LED taillights in the back without putting any resistance in there, if you turn the signal, turn signal on, would it hyper flash? If you don't tell the car, yeah, it would. But if you tell the car, it will just be regular. Yep, you can just tell the car, hey, I've got LED taillights. You check the function, flash it to the car's BCM. Awesome. And boom, it'll tell you right away. Awesome. Another neat feature about these softwares, too, is, um, is that you can actually data log with the car. If you've got one of the oh. more premium ones, that will, which is called Ross Tech, with them you can data log. You can also scan all the different modules on these cars. So these cars are pretty complex, as with most modern cars, um, anywhere from 10 to 30 different modules. That's, yeah. So just for example, on some of the modules that I've seen in my car, you've got a different module for the gauges, the radio, the AC, um, all the electronics, the lighting, obviously the engine, the transmission. Yeah. All of those have their own computer. And you can scan all of those for fault codes. Um, just because awesome. you don't have a check engine light doesn't mean there's not a fault. Yeah, that's true. So you can scan all these and see what's going on and literally read exactly what the issue is that this code is throwing and work your way backwards to fix it. So it's a very DIY friendly tool if you like working on your own cars as well, uh, just because you can kind of dig into it and see the inner workings of your car. Yeah. Now, I will be honest, the first time I used this tool, my OBD11 tool, and I dug in through the settings there, 
It's scary. Um, it? You go into any kind of module in the car, and there's like pages and pages of code. It's wow. very similar to just modifying code. You're taking a certain line of code, and you're changing a letter, or you're changing a number. And there's reports, obviously, online. If you don't do this right, you can basically brick that module in your car. Oh, that's, that's dangerous. So this is not for rookies if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if you change the code wrong, I've heard of people basically permanently disabling their headlights, and they have to go to the <laughs> dealer and have the dealer you know, uh, you reflash right. the car or even replace the module sometime. Jeez. I've heard of someone rendering their car unable to start. Because they're oh, trying to play man. with the way the ignition works, and then the car will no longer turn on. So now you're stuck in your garage. So make sure to read. Yeah. So do a lot of research. Nice thing about this is, if you are good on you know forms or anything like that, you can find common mods for your car with these tools. That's pretty cool. Right. So, your own mods. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So uh, VCDS uh, VCDS is the we'll common. We'll put a link down. Yeah. Well, just just it's the letters, the common acronym for it. VCDS is kind of a common word that people use when flashing these things. So if you type in your car and type in, you know, VCDS mods, a lot of times a, like a thread will come up with like a sticky of all the common things that people do on the car and telling you how to do them step by step for each cool. one. So you're not kind of going in there blind and guessing. Trying to search for the good ones. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one thing that we'll do in the future is we'll make a little video about this, you know, yeah. on my car showing some of the common mods that I've done. And kind of how they, you know, uh, maybe we can the car. do like a maybe like the easy one, like a even a window. little tutorial. Yeah, yeah, we can do the window. We'll Show how to do lighters. something like that there. Yeah, because the official that Ross Tech uh, Vagcom tool, that one is I think like two or three hundred dollars. But this OBD eleven one, you can find it anywhere from thirty to seventy bucks. That's a good deal. So it's much more affordable, and it offers everything besides the live data logging. You can't do that with this tool, but unless you're tuning your car, that's really not that important to most people. Um, just for being able to have the convenience of uh, not having to find somebody with this tool and doing it yourself, you can you know pretty much program the car to do anything you want um, as long as it's within the factory means there. A lot of the reason too uh, these features are off or on is because of the different countries. You know, a global car that's sold in America might not have features as a car yeah. that's sold in Germany. So packaging and all that. Stuff. Yep, packaging and all, even safety features. And I know the reason that American cars don't usually get the windows up with the key fob is because apparently they think Americans are stupid and will lose <laughs> our fingers, but the rest of the world can get it. So you can just turn it on here and cut your fingers off. I don't know. I will challenge that because uh, my G thirty five had it. It, it was around and, in American cars, and now Fusion, it's gone. But Fusion has it too. New Fusion has it. I guess Ford. Well, that's so stupid. Like with the Focus, you don't. You have to turn it on, but Fusion. they just give it to you with the Fusion. Yeah, Fusion actually, you can have the uh, sunroof as well. Yep, the same thing as well uh, with the car that I just got. You can have the sunroof be part of it or not. I wish I could do that. I don't trust sunroof motors, so I don't have it do that because I don't <laughs> want to break my sunroof by opening and closing it all the time. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna kind of. This will be the first part of this video, I guess. Uh, we are going to do a little bit more in-depth uh, kind of tutorials how to walk you through this. So if you do have any questions about maybe if you own one of these types of cars or you've heard about this tool or something that you can flash, definitely let us know in the comments below. But if you have any kind of questions as far as, you know, what are the limitations of this? What can you do? What can't you do? Uh, you know, definitely let us know. Um, I've been playing with this tool now for a couple different cars, so I've got a pretty good understanding of it now, and I'm not going to lie. Like I said earlier, it was scary when I first got into it. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to click the wrong button, and my car is just going to boom. <laughs> but, yeah, so I've gotten a little more um, comfortable with it, I guess okay. you could say. More experience. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I guess this will cover our uh, video about that. And uh, if you guys, like he said, if you have any questions, make sure to comment, share this video, and subscribe to our channel. Yeah. And thanks for watching. Kudos to all. That's going to do it for this one. We'll catch you guys in the next one.